Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be Addicted to Drama. Well, it's much better to be addicted to love, like the old song from the 1980s, than Addicted to Drama. And unfortunately, this particular guy that's emailed here, he seems to have a lot of drama going on in his life, in his dating life, in his relationship life, and... It just seems to create a mess. I mean, life's supposed to be effortless. You want to spend your life with people who are easy to get along with, people who support you in what you do, people who share the same goals and values. And a wise man once said to me, love your family, but choose your peers. Choose the people who you choose to spend time with. I'm sure you probably know somebody that's in your life. Like every time you talk to them, first thing they out of their mouth is like, Oh, God, you're not going to believe what happened to me. That's usually how the conversation starts out, right? And you're like, what the fuck, this guy again? And so if you've got people like that in your life or you date women that just automatically assume the worst or they create problems or unnecessary drama, it just tends to complicate life. And so instead of enjoying life, your relationship is like one never-ending cycle of always like trying to put shit back together again. And that's just a bad fucking way to go. And what I see so much of in this world, I see so many people compromising and men and women both going along with things that they don't really want to, settling with the person that they're with because they're too fearful that if they leave this person or they leave that relationship, that they're never going to find anybody better. And like I've said many times, this is what led me to get married when I was in my mid-20s to somebody who I loved but I wasn't in love with because basically I was too much of a weak bitch. I didn't, my balls were not big enough to say to myself internally, you know what? This is not right. It doesn't feel right. And what I should do is move on and end the relationship. But instead I did the opposite because I was just weak and I didn't know any better. And I certainly didn't have anybody in my family that could teach me anything in that area or that I would have even listened to back then because I just, my family was so dysfunctional and messed up. It's like, I don't know anybody in my, any of my family that has what I consider to be a good, healthy kind of relationship that I would want to personally emulate. It's like what I saw during the holidays and Christmas. There's a lot of people, it's like my dad's family didn't like my mom's family and vice versa. It's like they all hated each other. And so it's like during the holidays, everybody's getting together and they're like trying to bite their tongues and night snipe at each other. And it just, it just fucking sucked. Whereas... If you choose very carefully the per person you're going to spend your life with, I mean, if you come from a, a decent family you, and you date somebody and you realize their family is just a mess and there's lots of drama, lots of problems, I mean, you got to think about those things. you got to think about what's it going to be like when we, when we get our families together. Is it going to be a fucking freak show? Is it going to drive you nuts or is it going to be something that's going to add value to your life? And Because life is just too short to spend it dealing with a bunch of bullshit. So I've got a quote of the day that I want to share. This one is from Earl. And he says, Success is simply a matter of luck. Ask any failure. And it's a good mindset to have. It's, a, it, it's good to look at it that way because like people are ne things never work out. It's all, all about luck. It's always somebody else's fault. It's the other person that started the drama. It wasn't me. It's kind of like... You know, the person takes a dump and is like, oh, look at the shit on the carpet right there. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, that ain't mine. Or somebody farts. I, I didn't do it. Who farted? That really stinks. It's like people don't want to take responsibility for their own actions and their own happiness, their, their own welfare. There's too many people in the world, in our society, who are apt to just say, oh, it's that guy's fault. It's the politician. Hey, my guy didn't get elected. So, you know, I guess things are going to have to suck ass for the next four years. And they go through life giving their power away, thinking it's someone, it's the other person's responsibility to fix things, or, or it's somebody else's, it's it's luck, it's it's something else outside of myself, it's not me, It's it obviously can't be anything that I'm doing that cause all this drama in my life. So let's jump into his email. He says, hi, he says, I need advice on what I should do. Me and my baby's mother got married in April of 2011, and at first everything was going well. Well, in the beginning of a relationship, everybody's always focusing on what they like about the other person. But the longer they're together, the more they start to focus on the little idiosyncrasies and weird habits that they don't like about the other person. And by the end of the relationship, all they're doing is focusing on what they don't like about the other person, which is pretty much the exact opposite of where they started out in the beginning when they got together. 
He says, after a few months, things started to go sour and, and things got so bad that I moved out and I got my own place in January of last year. About a month later, I cheated on her with her sister's friend. Like, well, that's really helpful to the situation. And to be honest, I was so drunk that I didn't use a condom. Well, you should always wear a raincoat because you never know. You might slip on past the goalie, brother. He says, my wife was devastated. It's like, what do you think? For the next six months, all I would talk about was, or she would talk about was, what if I got caught, or if I caught something? I would constantly beg her back. Well, that's not a good way to go. But she wouldn't even consider it. It's like, well, dude, you cheated on her. It's like people do things like this. And see, here's the thing. It's like things are going bad and going sideways enough to cause you to cheat with another woman. So instead of learning what you needed to learn to make your relationship better, you do what, did what a lot of people do, which is look for fulfillment. Men and women both do it outside of the relationship. And the thing that you always got to look at is that at some point, one or both people stopped putting their best foot forward. And people always tend to ignore that. Like when they come to me like, oh, I just want to get her back, or I just want to get, get him back, or if it's a girl writing to me. It's, but it's like they never, and so when I'm talking to people, that's one of the things like, so when did you stop putting your best foot forward? At what point were you no longer as into it as you once were? And then you take them back through the process. Like they kind of ignore those things. They only look at the fact that, oh my God, I lost this person. My whole identity is associated with them and I want them back. But they don't, they really don't think about or really take the time to reflect upon what they need to, which is, well, why did you get turned off in the first place? Because when you go back to somebody, everything that was a problem or that you didn't like about that they don't people don't change they'll become a better version of themselves but they basically don't change who they are and so when you go back to somebody the the reasons that you stopped putting your best foot forward in the past well those same things are there he says during that whole year she was pretty much single and i kept chasing her she started being a different person changing her hair color getting tattoos piercing her nipples and she eventually became a stripper claiming she did it to put herself through school, which she's still attending school. She got a boyfriend whom allowed her to strip. And this went on till mid-January. And this whole time I was, so I assume January this year. So this whole time I was drowning in my sorrows, wanting her back and to be with the old her. I desperately wanted to know if she still loved me. What's well, like? Think about that for a second. Does this girl still love you? It's like she kicked you out. She broke up with you. She does didn't want to be in a relationship. You're like, does she still love me? It's like you look at what a person does. It's like Dale Carnegie said, it's over a hundred fucking years ago. This was a guy at the time when he he was the world's richest man, and he said, the older I get, the more I pay attention to what people do. And the less I pay attention to what they say. Hmm. Something to think about. So I made up a story that I met someone and we're expecting. Oh, so you made up a lie. Hey, I met another chick and I knocked her up and we're expecting a baby. Aren't you happy for us? When she heard, she called me and I confirmed it. And then she immediately broke down in tears. And a few days later, we met up to talk about our daughter that we have together. She then told me that she broke up with her boyfriend because she couldn't help but thinking about me and that she saw that, she, that he really didn't care for her since he allowed her to be a stripper. She invited me to come over to her place, and since I still loved her, I came over. We talked, and one thing led to another, and we ended up having sex. It was amazing, and after, well, it's like after, what, about two years? That's some great makeup sex. He says, after we had sex, she laid next to me, and I closed my eyes, and I prayed. Please, God, if this is real, please give me a sign, an undeniable sign. I prayed my thoughts so she couldn't hear. She then grabbed my arm and broke down like I've never seen her break down before. Well, the thing that you got to realize is despite all the shit that happened in your life, when you finally stopped chasing after you and you stopped pursuing her and you made her believe that you had moved on, you were moving on with your life. In other words, you kind of started to go back to the dude that you used to be that she actually fell in love with. And this is what I see because I... All day long, and like even today, I had two different guys say, one guy's trying to get his wife back, another guy's trying to get a girlfriend back. There's kids involved in both sides. And the interesting thing is it's, guys do the same thing. They get, they get into a relationship, they court her, 
Then she falls in love. They get married. They have kids. They At some point, he gets busy and gets caught up in his career trying to be a provider. The woman starts complaining, you're not taking me out. You're not dating. We're not doing the things that we used to do. You don't seem to make the effort. And the guy goes right in and defending himself like, hey, I took you out before. You know, I'm working really hard. You know, pay all the bills. We got kids. We got this, that. You're not working. But... And so he starts rationalizing instead of listening to her and going, you know what? I need to take yeah, I, you're right. I need to start planning some dates and doing those things. Instead, he wants to argue with her based on what he did in the past. Well, women know to instinctively look at a guy's actions. And so she realized, like, I don't it doesn't matter what you did two years ago, the first five years of our marriage, you're not showing up, you're not taking me out, you're not doing the things that you used to do to make me feel love. And every time she brings it up, he goes right back to what he used to do. Well, women don't care about the fact that you were the perfect husband for the first five years. They only care about the fact that you're sucking ass right now. So the thing that, that's important to point out here is that you went back to what I say all the time, hang out, have fun, and hook up. So she called, hey, you invited her over, she came over, you hung out, probably had a few drinks, one thing led to another, and then you had sex. And you both find out that you were missing each other. That's how a relationship starts, by hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. There's no relationship or labels or getting back together or getting together or having it. None of that shit enters in a conversation. That's what a courtship is. You hang out with somebody who you're sexually attracted to and who's sexually attracted to you. And the more that you hang out together and you focus on having fun and you hook up when you're hanging out together. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again cause, because every time you're together, you're, you're stimulating her emotions in a positive way because you're hanging out, you're having fun together, and you're hooking up. And so every time she's with you, she feels good. You're stimulating her emotions in a positive way. Whereas in the past... When you start arguing with her and fighting with her because you don't know how to communicate with her, you're causing her to feel unloved and you're not able to connect to her. You're not able to open her up like I talk about in my book. And then so she starts to close down and the things obviously spiral out of control. So the key is to get back to basics, hanging out, having fun, hooking up. You need to go through my book and you need to learn the stuff that's in there because there's a lot. Obviously, if you were fighting and arguing and things got so bad that you left, it tells me you don't know how to communicate with a woman, and it tells me you don't understand women. And if you don't understand women, there's no way you can – it's impossible for you to be able to communicate with her on a level that you need to to understand her so you can have a healthy relationship. And all this cheating and fucking around with, with other people, it's – obviously you've seen it's, it's not going to help your relationship. So the best thing that I would suggest for you to do from this point forward – Go on about your life. you got your own place. She's got her own place. Let her reach out to you when you hear from her. Hey, great to hear from you. Let's get together. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. And just keep doing that over and over again and focusing on that. Don't worry about getting back together or relationship labels or dating labels or any of that kind of stuff. And what will happen is you'll allow your wife to slowly start falling back in love with you and having fun with you again. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. If you focus on that instead of all the drama of the past or the relationship stuff or this or that. But one thing I can't stress enough is that you got to learn the communication skills that I talk about in my book. So it's very important. So if you learn those and you get back to dating and courting her, and I would call her no more than once a week. Call her once a week, ask her out on a date. But in this particular case, if she's reaching out to you and she's pursuing you, I mean the ratio should be 70 to 80% of it should be done and initiated by her and just like once a week you call her and you make a date then you allow her to pursue you what happens is the weeks go by she'll start calling and texting and pursuing you more and more and you'll start spending more and more time together And if you allow her to come to you like I talk about in my book you should be able to get things back to where they were but you gotta you gotta learn some the knowledge obviously in my book so you can fill in your knowledge gap because if you don't learn this stuff It'll go right back to the way it was in the past. It might be six months from now, or a year from now, two years from now. The bottom line is you don't learn the communication skills, you're going to fuck things up in the future. So if you want to get my help, the best way to get my help, the quickest way to get it is to book a paid phone coaching session so I can help you personally with your situation. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking a paid phone coaching session. I'll talk to you soon.